Oh, I, I didn't see you there. I was just reminiscing on one of my favorite events to ever unfold in the history of mankind. So since you're here, would you like to listen? You know what, I'm gonna tell you either way. So have you ever looked up to that silvery luminous moon and ever wonder how did mankind actually get there? Well, to answer that question, we're gonna to have to roll back time to the end of World War II. At this point, the United States and the Soviet Union made a push to expand their spheres of influence. Knowing that a communist system could easily destroy capitalism, the United States wanted to contain Soviet expansion at all costs. On October of 1957, the USSR had successfully launched the first satellite into space, Sputnik 1. The United States felt threatened, fearing that if the Soviets were able to launch a satellite, then maybe they could launch nuclear missiles too. And with this, the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union had begun. It was a very political race. The Russia, the Soviet Union wanted to uh, lead the race. They wanted to um, progress faster. They wanted to be first on the moon. When the Russians sent up Sputnik successfully, it was a big, big surprise. Nobody ever thought that they would be able to do that. Well, of course, all the money was going into the military and in space, and the everyday person was denied what we have here and we, what we had in the United States. When the Sputnik was launched, Eisenhower knew that he had to accelerate his current space program, which was Project Vanguard. And when they finally had something mocked up together, he knew that they had to broadcast it on live television so that the world knew once again that America was a prominent leader in every aspect that it strived for. When the first attempt at Project Vanguard went up, it, uh, it blew up into a million pieces and you know, it served as a huge embarrassment for the American people and America as a whole. When the United States decided to launch it and it failed, the United States sentiment completely deflated and it killed their confidence. All this money and resources that they put in, they all boasted it and since they broadcasted it live, everyone was so proud until everything just blew up. And the press had a field day with it. They called it a Kaputnik. They, they called it Flopnik, they called it Stay Putnik, and all these funny things to make fun of the fact that we were trying to copy Sputnik and we ultimately failed. Not just two months after this failure of an explosion in front of the entire United States and the entire world, um, we decided to try again. And it actually was a success. It was called the Explorer One and it was the first feat that we had. And we actually made a mark in history where we could compete with Soviet Russia. But it wasn't enough because Eisenhower realized that we needed much more to close this huge gap that we had between Soviet Russia and the United States because they had made so many more advancements before us and we just had so much to catch up on. So Eisenhower decided to really push the United States and all the, their government programs and switched from what they called NACA to NASA, which we know as NASA. It really meant to accelerate the space program and to make sure that we were going to come out on top against the Russians. Actually, prior to NASA, there was another program that was completely military-based. And after a bunch of inefficiencies, uh, Congress decided to create a new program called NASA, which you all may know of today. And it's actually completely civilian-based. Although America was finally entering the space race, the Soviets were making countless firsts in space. Prior to the launch of Explorer 1, the Soviets had launched another satellite called Sputnik 2, which was famous for carrying Laika the dog. The purpose of Laika was to prove whether or not humans would be able to survive the space flight. It's NBC News commentator Merrill Muller. Good afternoon. A dog knocked a goat right out of the world's attention today. In a masterpiece of propaganda timing, the Soviet Union announced it had launched Sputnik number 2, carrying a live dog this is reportedly history's first space traveler. Pulling themselves further into the lead, the Soviets actually astonished the world by sending a cosmonaut named Yuri Gagarin 
on April 12, 1961 to a full orbit in space. And this was actually extremely impressive because to send someone up in space was a huge accomplishment. And to send someone to full orbit was impressive beyond belief. And the U.S. got really nervous. They had to compete with USSR. So they decided to send up Alan Shepard, who was a astronaut who was sent up, but they weren't ready to do a full orbit. They could only send him up. And it took actually a full year after for John Glenn, an astronaut, to complete a full orbit around. And this was the same accomplishment that the USSR had completed a year prior. So you can imagine the disappointment that the US had by you know, completing the same accomplishment, but a year later. So it was a huge setback in their competitiveness with USSR. So while the United States was struggling to keep up, the Soviet Union actually had its first two-man crew, its first three-man crew, and its first women in space before we were even able to send one person to space. In light of all these accomplishments, the United States knew that they had to prove to the world that technology created by democracy could outbeat that of communist Russia. So now, in 1961, Kennedy delivered a speech where he declared that the U.S.'s aim is to reach the moon. And of course there was Kennedy, President Kennedy, who <clears throat> in one of his speeches that he made, he says, we're going to get on the moon, and he even gave, gave in the, the year 1969, he said, we're going to move and land, it, land on the moon. Why and Rice it did Texas. happen. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. So there was a really a, a, a lift up by us, the Americans, over what the Russian, what the uh, uh, Soviets were doing. With this bold statement, the Apollo program was created for NASA with the sole dedicated purpose of sending a man to the moon. And by the end of the decade, the Apollo program was ready to make its mark on the world. On July 20th, 1969, America had finally won this long race with USSR because we had sent three astronauts, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins to the moon after just three days of travel. Auto 11, everything going well for a landing on the moon, three hours, 21 minutes, and 14 seconds from now. We were celebrating it in, at home. We couldn't go to sleep with everybody was really high, hepped up to, to, to see the first images of astronauts landing on the moon. So I remember that very well. We had my daughter and uh, my son was there, but my son was apparently couldn't make it. He was too, too sleepy. But my daughter, she really kept up with her. There he is. Yeah. There's a foot coming down the steps. Armstrong is on the moon. Yeah, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for There you go. Welcome home. And now we have hey, now two Americans on the moon. Beautiful view. Is that something? <laughs> I had nervous and This is a photo I took July 20th, 1969, which is the day that the first man landed on the moon. It was taken at 9.30 p.m. And this, on the back of this photo I wrote, Watching TV, Channel 4, one hour before the landing of the United States astronauts on the moon. And I had this in my photo album. That's my daughter. There it is. Look a U.S. Time. flag on the surface of the moon. Yes, indeed. Beautiful, just beautiful. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. Because of what you have done, 
the heavens have become a part of man's world. Thank you, Mr. President. Keep in mind, the Soviets also had a program to send a man on the moon, but after two successive failures, which pretty much destroyed their entire test facility, the Soviets realized they needed to shift their focus back to something that they were good at. So that was an orbital space station where they could actually concentrate their focus and use their resources to something that they were good at. It was not a loss, it was a win. Everything we did was a win. Uh, they would portray it that it was a loss on United States part to invest so much money and continue on this project and sending people into the moon where a Soviet Union would say, why? We did that, there's nothing there. There is no need to go there again. Instead, we're gonna put our money, energy, and effort into pursuing other, you know, other things and continue on being far advanced than anyone else's in the world, especially where comparing to United States. That's it, there is no loss, it's win. Thus, the race began to wind down as relations between the two countries were reaching a calmer state. In 1972, the joint Apollo-Soyuz test project marked a new era of space exploration between the two countries. So one of the main components of the Cold War was the fact that both sides were building up their arms, and more specifically, nuclear arms. And this idea of the Russians having a huge arsenal of nuclear weaponry really scared the United States, and we were in constant fear. Oh yes, there was fear. I remember back when I was still in elementary school, we had these, I don't know how frequently, we had these drills where we were fearful of the atomic bomb and they had a drill and you had to get down on the floor and hide under your, under your desk. And I remember that very vividly. We did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you duck and cover. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. Produced by Archer Productions Incorporated. So one of the ideas that we used to combat that was uh, Reagan actually proposed the idea of the Strategic Defense Initiative, which would protect the United States in the case of this imminent Russian attack by their nuclear warheads. And public sentiment about this was extremely, extremely negative because of the fact that they nicknamed it Star Wars after the Lucasfilm because they had this idea that this, would, this strategic defense initiative that was originally supposed to be defense became more offensive and became almost like a space battle like it would be in a Star Wars film. On top of that, as this, the Cold War went on and the Soviets started to die out and the change of the administrations of the United States, this program became so infeasible that it eventually just faded out and we never heard of it again. The space race represents a time where dreams of reaching outer space becomes an unbelievable reality. Trying to push the limits of what was thought to be humanly possible, both superpowers risked safety and invested billions of dollars to make sure that there could be only one superpower in the world. It showed American perseverance despite the unforgettable failure of Vanguard, as well as it represented a time where the USSR and the US were on the brink of having a nuclear war which could have brought disastrous results. The creation of NASA and Apollo became integral parts of the American identity, strengthening the notion that technology made by democracy is supreme. However, these tensions could have been avoided. The United States could have acted sooner in attempting to work alongside the Soviets in achieving a common goal of reaching the moon. Instead, the U.S. waited until the Apollo-Soyuz program, nearly 15 years after Sputnik was launched into space, to finally commence cooperative efforts with one another. Ultimately, the space race manifests the notion that any goal can be achieved under the unification, perseverance, and the determination of the American people.